Okay, what have you been reading, Sank? I've been reading. So I'm so I'm not a good reader. So uh, about like ten, fifteen years back, while I was discovering world movies, I was I used to always. Uh, I always went to the classics, like which are the best ones that I that I can watch right now, and that's where I discovered, you know, Raging Bull and Godfather. So right now, I'm discovering all the classics. Like I'm starting with the classics. I'm not reading anything from the late anything after late twentieth century. So discovering Wuthering Heights and Edgy Wells. Uh, <laughs> Edgy Wells Time Machine, my. <laughs> that Oof. book is oh my god it it will uh, it was it was so good that when i read war of the worlds i became very sad because it wasn't it didn't live up to the to the time machine oh like that yeah. okay yeah time machine is like perfect sci-fi yes. and i can't believe like this was something so this is what people do wrong when they are talk when they are when they are creating futuristic worlds right like they are always thinking about something either utopian or dystopian yeah okay edg wells doesn't do that he didn't do that with time machine he's like what he, he's not concerned about what will happen or anything he's just talking about a world where things will be vastly different from whatever it is right now he doesn't yeah. care about the aesthetics or anything of that sort yes and that's what matters <laughs> like we are yeah. nobody cares about the uh small small things that are going to happen like oh. just tell us tell us how the future is going to be holistically yes exactly i mean that's you're right the time machine was way ahead of its time because one to talk about the bifurcation of the human species which which is which is truly the only thing that should matter in time travel right like mm-hmm. if, if you think about it from that context right it, that's the only thing that should matter where how does this impact us do we survive it if we survive it how do we survive it you know what kind of next evolution is you know next for us as as human beings like i've been reading that the the current generation of kids have weaker jaws than what we have that's the first mini uh, evolution streak that's going on where things are changing uh kids are being able to walk faster lift their heads faster turn faster than average you know the generations and we did like how we did it was much i guess much more spread out than the way they are doing it so they seem to be having cognitive skills but perhaps they're not as physically strong because the requirement to be physically strong has become lesser so the, i i love that that's the part that he spoke about because we've seen mm-hmm. you see oh sorry 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 Go ahead, Let go ahead. me just slowly cut you there. I don't know about humans, but I know cats are involved. Oh, one hundred percent. Like that. That shot in uh, uh, Love, Death, and Robots. I don't. I don't see that not happening. Yes. And there are. I. What are they called? Teratactile cats who have thumbs. That's a thing. So they they're not opposed to thumbs, but they but yeah they can grow thumbs. And oh that's that has been discussed discussed scientifically no but it's already a thing it's a it's an odd thing but oh. it is a thing so okay. but the fact for it to be like fully <laughs> functional like like you know the ape species it's it's probably going to get there eventually but it will get there eventually and when it does then yeah. they're going to have zero they know, to give. they know everything they just don't want to pay rent yes they know everything i i refuse to believe there are cats in my neighborhood who know exactly how to behave to get what they want exactly how to behave like they will they will change their personalities depending on the person in front of them and they do not care that you see them changing their personalities either they're like what are you going to do argue with a cat like like the the the, the <laughs> response is like Yeah, people look stupid for for criminal criminalizing a cat, for vilifying a cat. They know that, which is fascinating. Okay, speaking of good segue, right? Like speaking of people not paying rent. <laughs> good segue for today's movie. Okay. <laughs> I 
I feel like we need to have a separate discussion on good segues. You and I personally, you know, <laughs> go over what a good segue is and what perhaps a dark segue is. But but <laughs> yes. Uh, hello, everybody. This is Kremchis. Uh, thank you for tagging along on our uh, mindless chit chat. But it helps us warm up. It helps us get into it a little bit, you know. And we're thinking yeah, yeah. about doing that a little bit now where we just leave stuff in for you to discover and make fun of roast or we don't care but just you know have fun with us um, I mean it just it helps you during workout yes cardio initial cardio Punk is a new gym bro so you know he's, he's using the intermittent things. gym bro <laughs> <laughs> I love that intermittent right. gym is- Intermittent gym row should be like, it can be anyone's bio, right? Like, I'm not going to be there always. I'll be there for you. That is like the ultimate player, right? The ultimate, the ultimate mm. player that should, like, should <laughs> ever exist. Like, so not only does he not commit to his girlfriends, he does not commit to his trainer either. Like, he's <laughs> that hard to pin down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Consistently like- intermittent. <laughs> that was you know a couple of a uh, couple of years ago I heard this term serial monogamist and I thought that was amazing because I never understood what to call those people you know because there were people who were like serially dating and you know but they were always single they were never seriously in a relationship ah. people who were like in relationship to relationship okay. to, like break up today relationship Ship, like <laughs> literally within the week you know there was an next person they found they fell in love and they had an intense relationship for like years and then break up again and then another like they were never single and that was amazing to me like I the fact that that term existed serial monogamist that that's also <laughs> a thing where you can just yeah I don't know how I feel about those people to be honest you know the ones who are like never take some time to be single is Sometimes it happens. It just you're just fated to meet somebody who's perfect for you, which is fine. But when it happens like seven times in in a person, like that, <laughs> it's like that. Remember that window screensaver? It should just go on and on. Rebounding. Oh my god, <laughs> is that <laughs> coming? <laughs> but <laughs> speaking of rebounds, ooh. Okay, now this is a good thing. Thank you. Let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about a movie that has stayed with us. Uh, I watched it several years ago. I watch it once every every couple of months because it is just um, it is an afternoon of nothingness. That's the best way I can mm-hmm. describe this movie, where. Mm-hmm. Two long lost friends, quote unquote, meet, catch up. And it is the, if anyone watches Brooklyn 99 and you followed Gina's character. So she's this person who goes back to her school reunion and she makes up this story about herself that she is working on a Marvel film and Chris Hemsworth is, you know, like her buddy who's very clingy. Like she, basically creates this persona she creates an app or the fact that she uh, is you know is is this multi-million mogul kind of a person who has developed this app that you know helps babies find other babies in the area for a play date or something like that and oh. i think this is the, the fact that they have captured that is amazing because whenever a reunion, a reunion happens there is one person who's taking it always same thing happened in grown ups where there was one person who was faking it the guy with the with the convertible and mm-hmm. you know and he ultimately admits to his friend that oh you know um i i lost my job at the car shop and now i'm you know doing so th- there's there's always one person who you know feels the pressure to live up to the expectations which don't exist and i think in a nutshell that's what this movie is it has the great ajay devgan the great ajay devgan that man can switch 
shades and characters. I cannot believe this is the same person who, who acted in Golma. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just, <laughs> or, or welcome, or not welcome. Uh, no, not welcome. What was the other film with uh, Sanjay Dutt and Fardeen Khan and all the, best. Of, all the best and say you see him do a lot of slapstick comedy you see him do a lot of action and then you'll suddenly see him do stuff like Hamdalde Chukke Salam fantastic film uh, you see him do Divangi which the second half was complete focus but the first half the fact that he had that that character on the entire time is amazing uh, Obkara which is and uh, of course, Raincoat, which is, I think, their second pairing, right? Their first pairing was in Hamdulillah Deshu Ke Sanam, and Raincoat came later on. Mm. Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal acting. He is opposite Aishwarya Rai Bachchan, and people know her as, you know, the, what Miss Universe, Miss World, Miss India. But the fact of the matter is, when required she can really come into her acting element and she's not just you know the the pretty girl and the you know the the picturesque girl the regal girl the royalty girl because i have seen more often than not the director of the movie that we're talking about today he has done a phenomenal job in another movie with her chokher bali where she was just just acting her her heart out so we're talking about Raincoat. It is a phenomenal film. It is way ahead of its time. It talks about the part of, I think, relationships and very oddly the theme of shoulda, woulda, couldas. And uh, I, second time in a week, because by the time this comes out, there'll be another video that, that I've done, Past Lives, which is about the path not taken, the shoulda, woulda, couldas, the regrets, resentments, whatever you may have from your life. When you take a different decision from what your heart intended for, for yourself. And Raincoat follows, um, I want to say, Ajay Devgan, Aishwarya Rai, and Ajay Devgan's sister-in-law, or the friend's wife. Mm. She has... Oh, she's a great character. She's a great character. In that. So, okay, you start off, you, you talk about how this movie... You know what, what, whatever you love about this movie, and I, I want to bring up one little thing about her once, once we mm-hmm. reach her topic. So let, let's go. Okay, so I, like I said, I discovered this movie like a couple of weeks back, and I immediately, I, I knew that I want to talk to you about it, and we decided that let's let's just record this conversation, right? Because so for me, this movie is about. The most fascinating thing about this movie is these exes just blatantly lying to each other. Yeah. And it's the fact, the reason why it's fascinating to me is because they are exes. Uh, yes, they want to show off, but they are actually not, not even like, they're not even an inch, not even an inch near to their actual reality, right? Like, yeah. So many, it's, it's, it's so fascinating to me. It's so surprising that like so many things have changed between them in these past few, past few years. Yes. Uh, so much that they are just lying to each other. Like at one point we, so the movie, uh, does a lot of flashbacks between these conversations and we see how they were, how they actually were when they were together. And when they are present, when they are in the present time, we see that they are com- completely dishonest to dishonest with each other. Each other. So, yeah. I, so this movie is an adaptation of O. Henry's uh, Gift of the Magi, right? Like, I think Ritupano Ghosh has uh, referenced, uh, he has given uh, O. Henry credit, but not the story. But it's very clear that it's Gift of the Magi, because Gift of the Magi is also about uh, couples sacrificing things about for each other. Love, yeah. It's about lost yeah. love. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, actually, that's that's a great way to talk about. Like, it's about two people lying to each other 
they which is and and the lies are so far from the reality that it it's it's mind boggling and in in today's terms the best way to put it is it is the weirdest most enduring most beautiful story of who won the breakup and the answer being mm. up for grabs right like mm-hmm. i i have met groups of people who have argued you know one side over the other i have met groups of people who said no one won the breakup or both won the breakup and it just it 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 still makes me feel a particular way whenever i watch the movie because i think about every time th- these characters create a lie it is not necessarily to one up the other person but it is to or yes. to like you know like oh by the way you know you left me but i'm doing so well like that's not why that it's that, that journey right like yeah. being so unabridged with each other yes to being so dishonest and that yes. that whole journey is something is is what this movie is trying to show yes and that is very mind boggling that was very mind boggling yes and both people the 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 setup of the story is they they were friends very good friends and there's this is beautiful scene where they're getting ready to watch i guess a quote unquote adult film in in a theater <laughs> and uh, she's in her room and she's like getting dressed and she's buttoning her kurta and you just see her through a a screen like a a see through curtain screen and she calls out for ajay they've gone from the other room and she said come inside and help me so he goes inside and he's like what <laughs> because he doesn't he's he's kind of scandalized that she's dress undressing or dressing up in front of him I think help you with his butt. So he goes to help her and he says I can't do that and he just <laughs> he, he kind of you know like shrugs her away. She she goes away. He's worried also, right? He's, he's worried like, about the movie like uh mm-hmm. he's worried that uh, she might find it offensive or anything. Yes. Something of that sort but she she doesn't care what she's she actually is looking forward to it. She is yeah. the more promiscuous of the two. Yes. Yeah. He's, he's always he's always being thin. he's 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 more timid she's she's far more i guess vivacious than he is and then you see the switch happen once they're married it's through their lies so now they're living through their lies voraciously right so you see her going no no one can see you came to meet me because my husband is possessed and he on the other hand is about to get engaged but has a very flirtatious relationship with the secretary and uh, it's it, you see that they are trying to be the other person's ideal mate in some way right like where she is like a very traditional loving wife and he's this very playboy kind of a character and and neither of them are either of those things and as the movie as the movie picks up on the little traits of the characters you'll start seeing that this is not their way of competing with each other but their way of showing i'm fine since mm-hmm. our breakup don't worry about me and the same and the same voice is being reciprocated that i'm fine like don't worry everything is fine when he says switch on the light let me see your face over and over again and then she <laughs> finally goes and gets a candle and she goes you know like see he never hits me i'm fine like you know i i oh Oof. god i can't she i fit I so well in this role like for me i know like this may be a recency bias but I think this was her best performance. Yes. Like she fit a right like she she fit she was the best best uh, option for this role. She 100% I was think. because you you're thinking about when you think about Aishwarya Rai in the terms of the fact that she's like this world renowned beauty and stuff like that it is it is hard to picture this film. But if you think about the girl next door, think about any woman in your life, right? Who you grew up with who you know didn't have like a thousand hairdressers and and makeup artists like you know hovering around her and stuff like that. think about your first crush you know in school and think about the stark beauty of that person you know that you know the hair is awry and there's like you know little wick mm-hmm. stuff you know like kind of pulling out of their hair they mm-hmm. their bra straps are seen you know like they don't they're not put together and you know have people you know, with double sides yeah, you've double seen them in a certain way that Yes. Nobody ever. Which no one else has. Seen. And you see that in Raincoat where, you know, you see she doesn't have like sexy bra straps. She has like those thick bra straps, you know, because which which are comfortable and probably affordable. And 
uh, not pretty and pink. They're like a cream color because, you know, that's generally the colors, black, cream, white, you know, when, when you're buying bras that are comfortable. And there is perhaps in that in in that life where you're not in in love with a celebrity, but in love with a person, even that is alluring. And she never straightens it, you know, because she's working around the house and she's doing chores. So she's not going to mm-hmm. sit and keep like straightening her blouse which just makes me go, oh my God, mm-hmm. the, the details to that just makes me feel a particular way. And you think about every person in your life who was not a celebrity, was just pretty without makeup, you know, probably in a simple sari or simple dress, jeans and short if, you know, you you grew up in what, uh, 2000, 2000, uh, 2010, 2020 was the era of jean shirt, kurta, you know, where there was nothing, nothing, experimental in terms of like day-to-day fashion because you have to take a train go to school you know come back from school eat at the canteen um, you know sweat it out you know run between classes there is no scope for you to be eternally beautiful but is it something which you can um i don't know if is it something which you can think in your heart and go that woman had a grip on me yes you can and that's the story the, the fact that she is this very pretty girl, but not in a way which is glamorous, in a way that makes you go like, my I saw my whole life with her and it didn't work out. And that's the tragedy. Not that she married someone else. that She's not with me. That's the tragedy. And the fact that he put that in the story so, oh my God, I can't, I, I get goosebumps just thinking about it. I agree with your like, her not, her not fixing herself in front of him. I think like, yeah, she's she is that way, but it it's also about her feeling comfort around him, right? Like yeah. even after so many years, we see like she yeah. she even even though they haven't talked to each other in the last eight years, but you can still see that chemistry between them. But I think one more thing that I appreciate about this movie in those scenes is that the I appreciate the lack of sexual tension that they have. Oh like, yeah. Uh, in an ideal world, like if they were actually honest to each other, they would be jumping on each other. Right? Yes. Like, yes. Think of the think of the environment, yes. right? Like it's it's a Kolkata. One of the it's raining. Cities. Yes. It's raining. No electricity. No light. No electricity. Okay. The heat is should they they should be jumping on each other. They're right? supposed Bouncing. to close the windows and the doors yes. and no, let no one in as per her husband's instructions. Yes. So yeah, she they should be doing that. But I think this is another example of how they're not just being dishonest with each other, but also they're also being dishonest with themselves. Like this is not them. Everything that they're talking about, everything that they're feeling is also not something that they feel about themselves as well. Like they both are going through so such horrible things in life, but they this is the person that they have to be they have to tell all of this to to this person and they're not able to do that. So yeah, I think. I think the lack of sexual tension is justified. It's also necessary because if we spend the afternoon with them, watching them trying to jump each other's bones, it's not, I mean, there's nothing unique about that. That is Mm. the most, I think when people did talk about breakups and meeting each other, like it, I think it happened in Mad Men as well. Did you watch Mad Men? Yeah. You remember that scene in Mad Men where, he finally meets with his first wife. She's married to the man that is really nice to her and cares for her and stuff like that. And they end up um, having adjoining rooms at the same hotel and they end up spending the night together. And mm, I remember you know, some of it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then he says, like, what does it say? It doesn't mean anything. We had this night left. Mm-hmm. Now this night is not left anymore. And the next morning you see him drinking alone, you know, drinking coffee alone at the breakfast bar while her husband and her are gone back to like business as usual. Like they, 
that that is mm-hmm. the most obvious premise it's not a bad premise but the thing is it has been played out so so often where you feel like oh this is the st- it's not the stereotype as much as it's a, a depiction of some form of realism but in this case mm-hmm. the depiction of realism is in a very different cultural context this is indians and the cultural context of india is different not that people don't have extra marital affairs in india they do not that the social norms get thrown out of the window on a lonely afternoon raining in calcutta of course they do but <laughs> the the point of what we're trying to say is is that it happens in secret and it happens uh in secret in the sense not just in secret like between you and maybe your close friends know about it and stuff like that no this ha- this starts and ends with you you take that secret to your grave and although nothing happened between the two of them that afternoon they will take that to their grave and it, it whatever they talked about whatever happened it will it will start and end with them now there is the context of the friend who knew what was happening in terms of the fact that he had gone to meet her to see if he could borrow some money for his business but she doesn't actually know what transpired because every time she would call up he would pretend that it's mm-hmm. uh, his secretary who is very flirty and you know likes him and she, he also likes her and it's very cute when you think about it because you see Aisha and I going who is she mm-hmm. why she you think your fiance would like you acting like this with her <laughs> she's talking about herself yeah <laughs> it's mm. it's beautiful the your right. friend's wife know. is such a sweet character like it's like it's it's the how do you say the moral compass between the two yeah. for me that she was that yeah so if there was a line to be crossed not that we are saying that there were lines that were crossed but if there was a line to be mm-hmm. crossed she would call up at those opportune moments going hey so how's it going how how's your friend <laughs> <laughs> checking in on him and she has like this amazing affiliation for him because in they have not outright mm-hmm. gone and said it but in some ways they're trying to say that you know girls do cry a lot uh you know when they oh. get married and he asks she's this, talking about yeah so this conversation comes up when she finds out that he's crying in the shower or in the bathroom not in the shower uh because he is jobless and you know he has to now literally beg his close friends for work so when she finds out about it and when he asks her about did you cry when you left your home and came to live you, with your husband so that's when she advises him that next time when you cry do it yeah. in the shower do it in the shower keep the shower on so people can't hear you and uh, he asks her ultimately said do you keep in touch with him do you know where he is and she can't answer that because that is her secret to take to the grave see like nah. everybody <laughs> has these weird silos going on but they're not weird at all it is like no i'm not going to tell you what happened and and chances are nothing happened but the nothing mm-hmm. happened also has to be a secret because you don't want it, that is also a sense of defeat that nothing happened you know that we just talked and she just told me how her husband is an international traveler he just told me that he has his brand new business making move not movies uh, shows for television so one thing that she tells him is that that advice that she gives was uh keep the shower on when if you're crying what is the other advice that she gives i don't remember she does it in the at the end of the film sleeping pills say what sleeping pills she talks about sleeping pills oh yes <laughs> uh we have peanut gallery here peanut gallery my mom <laughs> shouting out facts <laughs> like sleeping Wait, there was another thing that she tells him about women right oh okay yeah 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 right is the same thing sleeping pills because she found it hard to adjust right to adjust and to forget about this person and she says don't yes. think so much about her because now she's having a good time with unke sath the mister ha so now she's moved on now she's 
she had that afternoon with you now she's going to wait for her husband and she'll go about business as usual that's the mm-hmm. that's the part which like now you also stop thinking about she's also going to stop thinking mm-hmm. it's like she her telling him that you know even though it it might look linear to you like it might seem like her life revolved around you in during that time it's not it's like it's the lives the women's lives women's lives are always going to be more complicated yeah than you actually think yeah and the part where she um so let's let's now anyone who hasn't watched the movie stop watching this hmm. video right now we are about to spoil this heart so in the course of the movie this is literally the last sentence the of- yeah This is the crux of the movie. Okay, so guys, just stop this video. Go watch the encode. Come back and listen to this. So um, and watch the other videos on the channel as well. We are making very good content. We want you to watch. We want you to subscribe. Share. If you don't like it, share it. Who's gonna know? Mm-hmm. Other than the person you shared it with. But who's gonna know? Like it, share it, subscribe. Uh, <laughs> She's not sugar coating. She's not sure what sugar coating. Who's not sugar coating? Nothing. Was it a pun? We are about to crack a bad pun. It was so hard. <laughs> Nobody will know. Wow. No. Wow. So, uh, reason we are saying this. This is the spoiler. Although they probably you will think like, oh, we've spoiled so much. We actually have spoiled nothing. We have not even spoiled hmm. the surprise cameo of which I'm about to. Anu Kapoor. Anu Kapoor. It's not a cameo. Like it's not surprise. It it, it is, is a cameo, but it's not a surprise because his name comes up in the movie. Beginning. That man. He oh, is. He's... Oh, he is absurdly good at what he does to the point where it doesn't even make sense to me that they that he is auditioned for these like uh this other movie. I think we should hundred percent do Vicky Dona, where I don't even want to talk about the movie. I just want to talk about him about Anu Kapoor. uh imitating sperm with his fingers greedy sperm and daisy greedy sperm. sperm and just he is a phenomenal actor uh mr ghosh has figured out i think in i don't know i think he managed to figure out who fits what role in this entire movie which includes ajay devgan's mm-hmm. best friend who is the person is encouraging him to go to aishwarya rai's house and ask for you know the loan um his wife obviously fantastic actress An- anu kapoor who is the land landlord who is just when he when he meets him his thing goes like oh how much does she charge you for an afternoon like what like, and ajay devgan is just you know naive and bumbling and yeah. what like what are you talking about like why <laughs> would she charge what sex yeah and i said why would she charge me and the fact that it it has come down to that where he is not being able to understand that aishwarya rai has been lying to him and now the landlord of the house that she claims to be her husband's is like they have not paid rent for several months um you know and and ajay devgan goes but i saw them get married it was a massive affair and he was anyone can fake a, a grand wedding like why would you presume people have grand weddings are rich like and the fact that that is a well known thing and ajay devgan is completely oblivious to that also shows mm-hmm. to some extent aishwarya rai's reasoning to not marry him because he was very oblivious to the world he still continues to be because everything mm-hmm. in aishwarya rai's immediate atmosphere shows that she is lying about her husband being a big yeah. shot whatever right? i think that is what like that is like one teeny tiny complaint that i have about one is like it's been four hours fucking use the bathroom and then up up kitne ghante se hai aap apne bathroom mein se and he is drank uh, he is drank some water right yeah, yeah that I, was one and i don't use the restroom in other people's homes if i have not oh yeah that yeah that could be the case so if he is anything But, like yeah. me, it's plausible mm-hmm. i i didn't think two seconds about that sir why do you expect him to use the bath 
my <laughs> reaction to Anu Kapoor was like, yeah, so it is his first time. He doesn't know how these bathrooms are. <laughs> also, and yeah, you're right about uh, him not reading the room or like. Like the bathroom thing is like, that's a that's an obvious thing where you say, oh, he didn't mm. go. But then we can call, write that off as a character thing where he just does not go to people's bathrooms. Mm. The other thing can be that um, she's so skittish around him and he's dying to see her face and he's so mesmerized by this long lost childhood love of his uh-huh. that he's like lost context that he's supposed to visit the bathroom because he's been out like all day and and stuff like that. And then there's a lot in his mind. There's a lot think in his about mind. Other things. To think about other things. So I mean we can we can chalk that off to like neo romanticism where you're just, oh my God, I'm so in love with this person I left behind. But the part which is glaringly obvious is the His furniture. mouth wasn't the only thing that was dry. Sorry. I'm done. It's not even a good joke, Sank. It's not even like it's not even so bad that it is funny. It's just Be- bad. Uh, because he has good car, right? So, so uh he and and just the, the the glaringly obvious thing is the is the furniture. Yeah. I'll... It's like just lying around. And I mean and and she clearly doesn't look like she comes from a very rich family either. Where mm. and and the way she avoids and the way she keeps bringing up the bathroom thing, like what if somebody locks me in the airplane bathroom and forgets about me? Like there are these <laughs> very glaringly obvious things, but I think that is the director's way of showing us that abuse happens in different ways. It's not always mm-hmm. getting beaten up. It's not always having a black eye. Like if he locks in the bathroom where he insists that she cooks her food, that is abuse. Mm. So that is abuse right over there. I, I, I don't, and it's not even that it's, it is physical abuse because you're forcing her to live in unsanitary conditions. And, but you know, you, you look for the obvious, you look for the, for the, um, the marks and the bruises. Like when I was watching Twin Peaks, the most horrifying uh, part in that show is when I realized that that husband of hers puts a bar of soap in a sock to beat her so that she's not left with any bruises. And mm. so it sometimes it doesn't have to show. Sometimes you have to just pick up on things. And I feel like Anu Malik's car, Anu Malik, Anu Kapoor's car. Very nice. <laughs> you know what his uh, real name is? What? Anil Kapoor. Really? <laughs> yes. <Sorry. clears throat> his real name is Anil Kapoor and uh, the, that's the reason why he changed it to Anu Kapoor. Because people might confuse him. So he took Anil and made it Anu. Yeah. His real name is Anil Kapoor and I think Anil Kapoor and someone else requested him to change his name. So that's why he's Anu. So, <laughs> okay. So, uh, Anil, Anil Malik. Anil, Anil Malik. Anu, Anu Kapoor, I think, is a very great character description of Ajay Devgan's character, very oddly, where he has to be told the obvious. He has to be hmm. stated the obvious. Because at one point when this is in the flashback when they are still kids and they are still unmarried and stuff like that. And uh, she comes to tell him that, you know, the family is giving her away. And he behaves like shocked and stuff. And she's like, you didn't ask me to marry you. You didn't set up your life. You know how my society is. You know how my family is. They're not going to let me marry a person who cannot like financially take care of me. You knew that. All these years I grew up around you, you knew that about me. So why are you behaving flabbergasted now? And I always find that that character is very naive and he's very he just hopes things work out for him or he just kind of has a very laid back approach to life whereas she's more you know forward and going and now the situation they are in is so unfortunate because he now wants to be forward he now wants to take the reins of of his life under his under his own control but he he lacks the money and then the person who he thinks you know has a very lavish life is living possibly a worse life than him because she has she's a woman she has no control in this context because her husband is calling the shots in everything for her 
and mm -hmm. she's just struggling to stay afloat. That scene where he picks up the the little fly cover off of the one bowl of food that is there for her because that's possibly all they can afford is not be able to eat too many meals and she's just existing in that environment and and i feel the whole movie the especially the ending where i love that little little detail that the director threw in that when she comes back with the food the necklace is gone from her from her neck i did not notice that so i knew that this oh. was an adaptation of gift to the mag guys so i knew that both are going to sacrifice and she it's also okay. has given up something but i didn't know what i did yeah. not notice the necklace she has one gold necklace throughout the thing nothing else she's wearing a simple cotton sari and she has one gold necklace i don't even think she has earrings at that point of time and mm -hmm. uh, when she comes back after wearing his raincoat she comes back and she gives him the food and she sits there waving the fan on him they are still lying to each other but mm. unbeknownst the other person knows yeah. and again you get to see ajay devgan's gullibility in that like you were so lost in her face and in the fact that you are getting to spend time with this girl you didn't take two seconds to realize that the one piece of gold jewelry she had on her was not there it was a it was like just mm -hmm. like a long gold chain mm -hmm. and then the same gold chain gets picked out when he sees finally sees it in his raincoat and the fact that she like you know talks to him like how, how could you not tell me this was happening so i'm so sorry my husband took the safe keys you know just um, so i'm just giving you this jewelry just do what you can mm -hmm. of this and the fact that both of them help each other out when they have nothing when they have nothing it's not that they both have something to give and they, they no they both very well need that money ajay they one especially because he's lost he's lost his job and what i find interesting and naughty again on aishwarya's side is that she could have used that to help her husband to pay for the for the rent yeah but she kept that for her friend she didn't give that up to her husband yes and that just oh god that's how the movie oh my the whole internal movie. hip hips were like oh. i don't know that you know that i it's the details the story is it goes in and out of the the flashbacks of you know when they were kids then it comes back to the present in the present you see aisha rai in a big house cluttered with old furniture um the the husband apparently is like no good he's a drunkard he wastes his money and his time and aisha rai is bound to this because you know her parents gave her in marriage to this man and ajay devgan is bound to this because whatever she wants is paramount to him so if she wants to stay married to this man who is refusing to pay rent fine i'll pay the rent for the next couple of months and i want to bring up another movie at some point on this channel called ti sandhya kai karte and it's the the premise is similar where you know old friends catch up via social media and other things and they find try to find out what's going on in each other's lives without actually talking to each other and these are their kai karte means like what is she up to these days and there's a scene in that where the guy goes she's standing you know with her child and her child is playing but her husband is nowhere in sight so he goes why is she alone it's okay it doesn't matter i am there for her it doesn't matter if she's alone and then immediately in that moment he goes what am i doing i'm married how can i how can i even think that out loud so that dynamic is like one up where both people are married in the situation and and raincoat has like that added layer of of simplicity where say where, where one person has no commitments other than his commitment to his friendship to her that's it the promise of that friendship which never goes away which is never made and it's never broken that's the beauty of that story a promise which is never made never expected to be kept and yet it is never broken and so uh, so the book gift to the maga it ends with so we again find out that they both have sacrificed each other yeah. and the moral like o henry does this a lot like he ends his stories on a with a twist right but this one after the twist he has a moral written at the end of the book like 
you might think that these two are the stupidest people on earth but if you actually think about this they're actually the smart they're actually the luckiest people on earth they're actually the smartest one on earth because they're smart enough to find love in this world true love yeah. <laughs> yeah. i think that's what it is ultimately they the movie shows us once again through the lens of both these characters that love is sometimes just you know letting things be it's stupid for everyone else except yeah them. except them it's just to let things be and the way he leaves the message for her that just you know like she, he finishes uh. the thing and he wipes his hand on her bed sheet and she goes what are <laughs> yeah. you what was that i don't know he just like wipes it and says and he's like yeah wash it later he tucks the letter in under the bed sheet hmm so she leaves a note in his raincoat that you know please take my jewelry and start your business he pays the rent for the next 3 months and he leaves the note that i've paid your landlord for 3 months so don't let him you know take advantage of you and make him like don't make him take more money than what he's owed and don't worry you know i'll figure something out we'll we'll fix this mm. together so that letter he tucks it on the bed sheet and he like deliberately spoils it so that she will have to wash it and take it out and but, but see again i'm trying to say this is ajay devgan's character's gullibility and stupidity like he's truly like idiotic because his way of doing this <laughs> is childish and she isn't that yeah. kind of, she's a little more grown between the two of them because she's been through a tougher life i feel between the two of them yeah like his his life is heartbreak that's his biggest tragedy which is a very common tragedy her life isn't just heartbreak her life is family pressure a husband who does not respect her or love her uh bad living conditions poverty heartbreak her life is a little more complicated than his the what was what do you make of the last shot we see them we see just a uh, i don't know what it's called that the rickshaw kind of thing parked yeah, outside of the antiques yeah yeah so does that mean like they decide to leave because they don't have even the jewelry and all that they they have to no he comes in with new antique furniture to sell that's it okay he just comes so, back with new stuff okay so why do you think that should have been the last one last frame i think that was uh i i mean i i could be 100% wrong about this but the cinematography thought... is done by you know it's done by the guy who um what's his name uh avik avik mukhopadhyay i think he's the guy who did and and this guy has done you know titli which he he's an every rituparna ghosh's film the cinematography in it and then he did bunty or bubbly he's done uh what's it called uh i forget i oh the last layer so his style of cinematography is more of you know showing that everyone has gone back to the basics so this anomaly happened and now it's business as usual Mm-hmm. like will he really be able to set up his business we don't know will she really uh, will her husband really become a success by selling antique furniture we don't know and it ends over there like how parasite is right the way that ended was mm-hmm. to be like we don't know we don't know for a fact if he'll like study well and become a big shot and then buy that house and save his father we have no idea and that's the story like they leave us wanting like wanting to know what happens will they ever keep in touch will they talk to each other we don't know because her husband returns he opens the door he pulls the cart in so he returns it's not like he like abandons her and then she can go find her love and be with him so i also thought that it the ending was open to interpretation but for me it was like that last frame i thought like they're leaving hmm. and now there's no way he, he can contact her so there's no way he can go back and return the jewel like that it's like how you know how lunchbox ended like 
they both want to find each other at the end of the movie so i was spoiling the raincoat and lunchbox yeah the same simultaneously <laughs> but yeah was. you know how lunchbox ended right like yes they both wanted to find each other but she she thinks that he's gone to nashik and he he goes to her home but she is already left for nashik but yeah. she's already left for right so that is open to interpretation here i fu- i thought that it was there's no way for him to return the ju- return the jewels because they are leaving by the time he'll be there they'll they'd have left off so you think what happens in the end is they move houses yeah because they no longer have the jewels to pay the rent dollars Mm-hmm. Okay. I see what you mean. Because the scene where maybe like says, <laughs> maybe like she finds out she obviously finds out that he's paid rent and she doesn't want that to happen, right? Like so maybe she bought the money back got the money back from Anu Kapoor and they leave the place. Something like that. I see. Because the scene where you know she she says like what if someone locks me in the plain bathroom and you know i'm just left there then who will open that door for me and mm-hmm. his reaction is i will the knee jerk reaction mm-hmm. is like oh i'll do that and i think that is so pretty in terms of just dialogues because it's like oh i mean i'll be there for you don't worry and you're right possibly that's a, a kind of the first of the empty promises where she may have to wait a while till he finds her in that plane to mm-hmm. open that door because the point of it is to not win neeru but to set her free to just let her be free from this this hell that she's found herself in and just give her you know the the room to just leave the house if required you know like see you owe him nothing now you know just leave and it's possible that he opens a door and he doesn't find neeru in there and neeru has left that's possible too but uh yeah i i like the i like the way it ended i love that they didn't show us how manoj leaves the house how he says bye to her they never showed us that yeah we have no idea how the bye happened. the way she calls him manu <laughs> so it's no, yeah. <laughs> oh god gives me goosebumps and i think about it but yeah That's guys i, I mean, think this this is her best performance yeah this is it is her best performance and she is just a darling darling person to watch in this movie so is ajay devgan um phenomenal acting phenomenal story great cinematography uh, really puts you into the depth of you know foregoing love theme of things uh sacrifice in the name of love things uh but not sacrifice in a way you would think like not like oh i i hope you're happy with someone else i know you're not happy with someone else but i also know that i can't give you any alternative than just let you know that if you are stuck in this i'm here to help you so mm-hmm. uh cuz the the adele song of never mind i'll find someone like you it's it's very very beautiful mm-hmm. uh and i think this story is the opposite of that where it goes like i won't find anyone like you and i have to live with that and that's okay and that's that's the story and oh guys again please 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 check out our other movies i was sitting and cataloging all the reviews we've done over the past couple of months we have some fantastic recommendations for you we have done some fantastic discussions raincoat is one of the many and raincoat is a fantastic film but we kind of go deep into the emotions of the film and how we felt while watching it we don't critique it uh, in a way of like oh you know this this camera angle and and uh, you know the this uh, foreshadowing and we, yeah we love those things but that's not how we critique it we talk about it it's like you know sitting and dissecting a movie that really made you feel like you could make movies you know and i i don't know if anyone remembers that part of their life and they were children and they watched a movie and were like 
oh my god i can make a i can make movies too you know and you feel that spark of inspiration going that creative spark of inspiration going through you and you find your friend who also loved that movie and then you like sit and do fan theories for hours and this is basically that channel you you find your friends and you dissect the movie with them and you have some fun and you have some chat and and you listen to songs bad puns and and you watch me roll my eyes at at those bad puns and we just have a good old time and please check out our other videos please like share and subscribe uh thank you so much for the love you're showing us uh but we need need these these videos to cross over uh you know into higher views higher watchers uh, and do tell us if you think we are missing something if you think we need to add stuff or remove stuff do tell us that uh but other than that uh, sank do you do you want winding up thoughts of raincoat raincoat um, or making your ex jealous i tried i <laughs> I tried. It's fine. Uh, but yes, raincoat is raincoat or just take an umbrella. No. I feel like yeah, that's good. Raincoat or just take an umbrella. That's that's what we are ending this fab fabulous video on. Uh, People can hear you. you. crime <laughs> even if they can't see you wonderful okay thank you guys uh i'm ending this video and sank and continue torturing me with his puns we'll see you soon and we love you loads bye bye bye